and welcome to My Counselor Live. My name is Brittany East, and the featured counselor joining us today is Carly Greenhall Stricker. Carly has taken a deep dive into the not often talked about fourth trimester to really try to understand how all these bodily changes happening to a mom can affect her self esteem. Before we go into that, though, Carly, can you take a minute to introduce yourself for those counselors or counselors for the audience members who may not know you yet? Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, like you said, my name's Carly. I'm a counselor here with my counselor. Um, I've been a counselor for several years, really started in um, the addiction rehabilitation world. Um, and then I became a mom myself and moved away from that mainly for a work-life balance. Um, and joining my counselor really allowed me to be able to be mom during the day uh, and counselor by night. So it ended up working out really well. And I really get to just do what I love here. Um, I work a lot with trauma. I work a lot with anxiety and depression. Um, and as we know, you know, self-esteem can kind of feed into all of that um, and vice versa. And so I really just like to work um, low and slow with your heart. Uh, and so a lot of my therapy, a lot of my counseling is really just about getting to know you and your heart, not so much your symptoms and, you know, um, your diagnosis and things like that, that can sometimes label us. Um, so I really just like to work with your heart. Um, and I really just love to get to know the person, um, which is why I kind of navigated into doing this article um because i was getting to know myself in that yeah absolutely. It sounds like you have a lot of firsthand knowledge you know so your article yeah. itself is actually titled the fourth trimester part one so i'm assuming there's going to be more coming which i'm excited yes, to there see. Are. um so this one's about the female body postpartum and its mm -hmm. impact on self-esteem so i know you kind of mentioned you know your own experience is that really purely where it came from or what were you seeing in your practice that really felt like this article needed to be written um, it was actually twofold. So one was, yes, my own personal experience as a mom. I was talked to a lot about postpartum depression during my pregnancy and after. Um, and it was really harped on, like postpartum depression. That's all we really talked about. And the more that I started to notice my own experience of, I didn't really have what would be postpartum depression, but I still just didn't feel right. Um, so really started to explore in my own heart, in my own body of what was coming up for me. Um, and that's when I noticed a lot of it had to do with um, my body, the changes wow. and how it was impacting my view of self. Wow. Um, and so that kind of kick started it. And then I would come into session and a lot of my clients were new moms um, and so it just kind of happened that way um, as I'm sitting with them and I'm noticing their own experiences wow. that aren't postpartum depression, like clinical right. postpartum depression. Um, and it's something else. And then I would also watch their husband sit next to them and just kind of be flabbergasted and not know what to do or really understand because their wives didn't understand it either. And so um, that really moved my heart into thinking, wow, okay, we really don't talk about this enough. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, it's true. I mean, I have two kids. It's not, it was just, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, scream PPA, PPD. Okay, nope. Like, okay, I like, move on. Yep. <laughs> you're, you're fine then. Um, so do you have it written specifically for moms right as, right as they're in this? Like, who do you think would be helpful for them to check out this article? Really, I think any moms that are, at any point in their mom journey. And so whether you have a child that is a fresh newborn or you have a child that's five, six years old, I really think there's a lot of good meat in this article that can help anybody. But I do believe that moms that are within that considerable postpartum period, which is about the first two years after delivery, um, that it really helps in that time frame, specifically because it's almost like early intervention, I like to think of it as, the more wow. information we can have during that period, it can really help us navigate that time because in that window is when hormones are still fluctuating, we're really learning how to navigate having a new tiny human in our home, even if it's not our first child, 
it's still always different bringing another baby home and adding more to that family. So I really think that women um, that have either just given birth or are really within that, that postpartum window would really benefit most from this. Awesome. So do you feel like there's specific factors? Like you can kind of tell like, oh, that person's probably going to struggle with postpartum self-esteem or or anything that specifically kind of jumps out to you that contributes to like that low self-esteem? Yeah. And I think there's, there's a couple things to talk about here. And so one of them is if we're heading into pregnancy or postpartum with already decreased self-esteem, if we're already struggling with our body image, if we're struggling, you know, with the, the strength and the understanding of what a new mom is going to be, if, if we've already struggled in history in high school or in, you know, young adulthood, with low self-esteem, then that um, kind of creates a foundation to breed low self-esteem postpartum. Um, And so that is definitely one of the factors that if we've already kind of feel down about ourselves, that it can definitely heighten the chances of us having lower self-esteem postpartum. Um, Another thing really, and it kind of goes hand in hand with the postpartum depression, um, is support. Um, And so women who have a really low support system um, are maybe kind of navigating this on their own and are alone in this that also can really heighten whether or not we're going to have some self-esteem struggles just because then a lot of the um, you know a lot of the responsibility is really just going to fall solely on them which can really be difficult to navigate Um, so it definitely makes a difference if we don't have that solid support system. Um, So kind of looking out for those things as we're navigating, as we're pregnant, as we're navigating towards having children, kind of like what support do I have and how am I feeling about myself in this process so far? No, that totally makes sense. Um, And it's something that you had said like earlier that like the postpartum period is actually like two years, which was actually surprising to me, a little bit relieving, honestly, like, oh, so much more grace, (laughs) two years. Um, Why do you feel like women though are pressured to have this, like, to like bounce back or to feel like postpartum is like six weeks and then Mm -hmm. we're done? Like, where do you feel like that comes from? Um, Two things, I think it comes from, and perhaps unintentionally, um, but it comes from both, I think, society and even from, um, our medical, our our medical team and our doctors. Um, And so as far as society, we often see, you know, celebrities and these people who have just had babies and they're kind of walking around with these tiny little waists. And it's like, you met, like, did you even just give birth? Um, (laughs) And like, life is easy. And it's just kind of, this picture has just been painted um, that that's what's supposed to happen. Um, And, you know, it's really kind of, we almost forget like there's this beautiful look of a woman that's pregnant, like that's housing this beautiful child and there's a glow about her that they talk about. And then we give birth and it's almost like, oh, look at this tiny, cute little human. And then we almost forget about the mom. Um, And we kind of put her on the back burner. And so um, no one's really checking in on her and just wondering, you know, how are you? And, you know, you're still beautiful and still strong and all of those things. Um, It can come from husbands, you know, that unrealistic expectation of what my wife's going to look like postpartum. Um, So there's a lot of different factors that go into it, but also the medical piece, I think is a big one. Um, At least if you've had a, you know, normal, um, regular pregnancy without any major issues or anything um, that usually after you give birth, they give you like a six or eight week appointment, right? That's, that's when they want to see you just to make sure everything's going back into place and all of that. Um, And that's when a lot of times they'll even, I remember my own doctor saying like, yeah, you're cleared, you're cleared to exercise, you're cleared to do this, you're cleared to do that. And I kind of sat there and was like, I just had a baby eight weeks ago and I'm cleared like cleared as in like good to go. And they're like, yeah, set up your yearly appointment. We'll see. And I'm like, what just happened? What What took 40 weeks to grow to fruition in eight weeks it's done. And I think that creates this unrealistic expectation that when we say we're cleared, 
that that means, okay, it's bounce back time. You no longer are allowed to carry that extra weight. You're no longer allowed to be tired. You're no longer, you have to bounce back to pre-pregnancy self. Yeah. And that can create a lot of unrealistic expectations for us as women. So I think it's twofold, you know, society and then also the medical team that kind of gives us that unrealistic expectation of when we're supposed to bounce back. No, I totally feel that. I relate to all of it. I love in your article, you know, you talk about like even just how like our boobs change or like yes. how our stomachs, like just all these things that are literally out of our control. Like there's nothing we could have done mm-hmm. <laughs> differently to like fix our muscles, um, mm-hmm. how they're attaching to our like chest wall. Um, and I really like, you know, you're too, you spend a lot of time like talking about like, act, like the physical changes that are just, they're there. Um, and you bring up that, like, although like we realize like, oh, okay, like, I don't like how my body feels. We may not realize that we're like also in a process of grieving, like the woman that it housed. Um, can you explain like what that grief looks like or like mm. why that even comes up? Like, how, like, where does this even come from? Yeah. And so I think in that moment, you know, we're trying to be positive and trying to tell ourselves, you look great. And, you know, this body just housed a beautiful human and it's okay that it's different. And it's like, yeah, okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. And it's like, yeah, but what if we're not okay? And it's like, we, the grieving process, I think sometimes when we think of grief, we think of like the death or the loss of like a human life. Right. But grief comes in all different kinds of forms. And so um, the grieving process, I think sometimes for women postpartum, we almost feel guilty if we start to miss our old body, miss our old spirit, miss our old mental capacity. I know I have mom brain yeah. like crazy. <laughs> and so I think we start to miss those things um, and we're upset that they're gone And if we don't allow ourselves the time to sit in that and really look at it and grieve it and say, man, yeah, I don't have the same brain that I used to. And I don't have the same body that I used to. And that really stinks. And I miss it. And I miss being able to fit into that old pair of jeans. And maybe I'll get there one day. But right now in this moment, this is where I'm at. And it's okay to look at myself in the mirror sometimes and just not be totally thrilled with what I see or forget things. And just knowing that it's, it's sometimes it's hard and that's okay. It's okay that it's hard sometimes and really allowing yourself that time to heal from, you know, what once was into now what is. Yeah. I really appreciate that. I feel like you know, cause it's, it's hard cause there's so many conflicting emotions. Like, and you have like, Oh, I love this baby. Like, you know, I really, or maybe if you didn't really want to get pregnant that soon, um, you know, like even those emotions, but I just appreciate, yeah. Like just kind of drying out that there is, it's okay to grieve, even if it like, mm-hmm. you can kind of like holding space for both. Like I'm grieving what's lost. I'm grateful for what's been found. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think just validating, it sounds like and normalizing that, like there's a spectrum <laughs> Yes. of emotions and we, we, we we're it's like I really appreciate a lot in your article you talk about um how like God really uses becoming a mom to just like mold us to transform not like in a totally ethereal way but just like we're rec- like we, you literally are a new person you were a mom you weren't a mom and now you are a mom you like you have this title that you will have for the rest of your life mm-hmm. um and like realizing that like you're might may, may be grieving that the person who was not a mom, <laughs> like exactly. the responsibilities that like are non-responsibilities that went along with being a not mom. <laughs> yes, exactly. hundred percent. Um, so if a mom finds herself, you know, like, wow, okay. I really, like, I'm not depressed to the point where I'm like, you know, I'm worried mm-hmm. about all these like really intense down thoughts, but I am feeling down, like I'm feeling a little bit low self-esteem. Are there like practical steps a mom can take to kind of like navigate this new part of her life? Mm-hmm. So yeah, there are some there's something playing in the background. I think we have to hold on a second. What is coming up? I apologize for that. We'll pause for a second. It's okay. It was a video, one oh, of my clients' videos. Okay, so it was just mine. So we'll just have to pause for a second. It was a video that was playing in the background. So we'll just pause for a second. So 
So it's some factors um, that can play into us really navigating low self-esteem, right? In some practical ways. Um, first and foremost, I really think, um, like I had mentioned earlier, finding a good support system. Okay. Um, even if it's just one good friend, family member, um, someone that you can really just rely on to know that they're really just going to help navigate this time with you. Um, that could be a spouse, like I said, friend, family member, a counselor, um, just have someone that's in your corner to be able to support you in those times when you're like, man, this is really hard. And they're like, yeah, it is. And that's okay. And I'm here for you. Right. So just making sure we don't have to do this alone. Um, and then other things are things that don't cost any money at all. Things like, um, you know, I mean, it might cost money to buy the food or to buy the book, but really like eating nutritional, um, nutrient dense foods. And even if it's not all the time, that greasy pizza is also just as comforting. Um, but it's really making sure that after pregnancy and delivery, we know that a lot of our nutrients is lost. It, the baby kind of takes it with them when they come out along with hormones. And so it's really remembering to replenish those things that we've lost because that can really help alter whether or not we're getting enough sleep, our mood, our energy, which all plays a role in self-esteem. And so it's really making sure that we are hydrating, we are eating nutritious foods as much as possible, um, get outside and go for a walk. You don't have to go to a CrossFit gym and do some intense energy, you know, focused stuff. Get outside, breathe in some fresh air, go for a walk um, and find something that you just really enjoy doing. Find something that you just really love to do. Um, because I think that those things are forgotten a lot of times when we're in this headspace of just feeling like, ah. and so it's, it's kind of forcing ourselves or having our support system to give us that gentle nudge of like, Hey, let's go for a walk. Hey, let's grab some coffee. You know, let's, let's get some water in our system. Um, let's go paint. Let's go for a bike ride, whatever it is to really find things that bring you joy and do that in community, I think is so important when you're navigating postpartum and especially when our self-esteem is kind of on the fritz. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And I even really appreciate how you, just your viewpoint of like, you know, eating well or like eating nutritionally rich food. It's not in the sense of like, oh, well, drink your water and eat nutrient rich food so you can like get skinny again or mm -hmm. you know, whatever your mm -hmm. ideal person is, but really about like, let's be practical. We lost a lot. Yeah. <laughs> A lot was taken. If you're nursing, a lot is continuing to be taken. Oh my goodness, yes. You know, um, so just really thinking about like, okay, like I'm just kind of putting back in what was lost. I'm not trying to partially change Absolutely. something new, but just really just taking care and like, just like mm -hmm. taking, taking care of a baby. So I really appreciate that. Because I feel like sometimes we can like skew and we get caught yeah. up in like how we eat because of like this goal we're trying to attain versus just replenishing and like just taking care. So yeah, really appreciated that. Um, what final piece of advice would you give to any like postpartum moms or maybe even moms who are getting towards the end of their pregnancy, realizing they're about to enter this fourth trimester? Like, what do you feel like would be a final piece of advice for them watching this? Mm, a final piece of advice, um, be gentle, be mm -hmm. gentle on yourself. Um, God has kind of bestowed upon us as women this great task of becoming moms, of, you know, growing tiny humans and allowing them to enter the world. Um, and I think it's just so important to really just be gentle with ourselves, um, especially as we navigate once we have had this child. Um, all remembering all of the changes that your body has gone through, all of the changes your mind has gone through, your hormones. I mean, just there's so much change that happens in such a beautiful way. Um, and it's okay if it doesn't feel like that all the time. It's okay if we struggle. It's okay if we trip. Um, it's okay if we cry. It's okay for all those things to happen and really just just be gentle with yourself. And I think um, if there's one thing that I could stress is that you don't have to do it alone. 
if you feel like you are struggling, if you notice self-esteem is kind of plummeting, yeah. if you notice you kind of look in the mirror and you're like, I don't know who this person is. Maybe you don't even like the person that you see or you don't recognize them and you're just really feeling down. It's not something you have to navigate alone and you shouldn't. And so I think that it's important that you get that support system. Um, you get a counselor, you get a group, support groups online, whatever that looks like, um, to just know, to be kind to yourself, to be gentle to yourself and that you don't have to walk through it alone. I really love that. It almost reminds me of like, I can't remember the right saying, of course, because I, I have mom brain as well, but like, like it takes a village to raise a child, but I feel like it's because the mom needs the village. <laughs> yes. I, like, the children need a village, but I feel like it's really the mom. Yes. 100%. Raise the child versus, at least when I was younger, I thought it was like posters in my class. I'm like, oh, the kid, like, yeah, the kids, we need a lot of people. But I'm like, I think it's actually, as a mom, I'm like, I feel like I, I need that. I oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> all the help. <laughs> Give me all of the help. I need it all. Yeah. No, well, Carly, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us. I can totally sense just your heart to just, mm. I think, just bring a lot of validation, a lot of peace, kind of like what you said, like really like letting people be okay with where they're at, like and yeah. without judgment and just like, that's your starting point. Like that's mm -hmm. okay. Like everyone's different. So it was so clear for that. I really felt your heart and I really appreciate you just like really diving mm -hmm. into this because you're right. Like it's, most part of like four, I feel like fourth trimester is like, again, it's like, oh, that's six weeks where you're like bleeding a lot. Mm -hmm. And then we move on, you know, but really yeah. just, even the viewpoint of like two years, what does that look like then? How do we feel about that? So thank you so much um, for just, yeah, for coming with all that. Of course. And, yeah. And then thank you everyone for joining us today, for listening, for watching. Um, We're so grateful to have you. We're grateful that we get to have professional counselors sit down and like share their wisdom and that you will support us um, just with your listening ear. So we really appreciate that being able to give back to you. If you aren't following us on social media yet, you can find us on Facebook. If you search Love My Counselor on Instagram, you can search the thing, same thing. Our handle is Love My Counselor. And on YouTube, if you search My, counsel my Counselor Online Christian Counseling, um, lots of videos from our history past interviews will pop up. We'll see you next week for another episode of My Counselor Live and have a great week.